What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. I want to welcome all my new subscribers and all my old current subscribers. Thank you for being a part and tuning in to this episode. We got a special one today. Today, in this episode, we're going to be using our plastic welder to repair this crack. Now, some of the equipment that you'll see us use today is we have our sander, we have 180 grit, we also have tape. Now, we don't have aluminum tape, which we should probably have, so you want to make sure you're using aluminum tape when doing some plastic welding, but we're going to use this tape to kind of reference how we should use it. Next up, we have some just basic glass cleaner because we want to make sure that the area we're cleaning is clean and we like spray away because it has no added aroma or any type of sense to it. You're going to want to get yourself a Dremel with a teardrop bit. This is going to help you later on when we go to V-Groove out the crack. And lastly, we have our welder. Now, if we take a look at our welder, we have all everything that we need in order to make this job happen okay this is a very basic um, plastic welder and i'll put the link in the description and basically it utilizes heat at different temperatures in order to melt the specific type of plastic back into your bumper so what we have are fiber flex which we'll go over later which we'll be using today and then the kit also comes with a whole bunch of different types of plastic that can be melted according to the type of bumper that you have okay and then we have the module here which can be set at different temperatures which we'll go over how to properly identify and then you have your welding tip you have two tips a flat iron type and one that accepts the rod that goes through it okay so we'll discuss when you use these and how to use these right now okay so before we start anything let's identify this plastic now you're not going to be able to make it out but right here it actually has the honda and then it has a dash kind of arrow and then it says pp right here it's very hard to see. Maybe you can catch it on camera. It's right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this PP and you're going to go over to your case and it's going to have it identified. It's going to tell you which one it is. Now here in the case, it's got a guide. So if we come over here to PP, we see it is polypropylene and we're going to go ahead and find our appropriate rod. We found our appropriate rod. And if you look right here, it has exactly the name that we we're looking for. And this is the same plastic that is uh, the bumper is made out of. This is the same exact plastic within this rod that we're going to use to fill up this gap right here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is come to the front side. Now, you're going to want to use some tape to hold it together. It's not really an issue here. If you had a crack that started at the edge, then you would need that aluminum tape. But we're just going to use a regular tape here. And uh, like I said, aluminum tape would probably be what you want to use to hold it together because it can withstand to the heat. But just for the purpose of the demonstration, we're gonna use this blue painter's tape. So we're gonna flip this over. And what we wanna do first is we wanna clean this area really well. So we're gonna use our glass cleaner. And we can also use a wax and grease remover as well to make sure that it doesn't have any silicones or anything of that nature. The next thing we want to do is kind of clean up this area. It's got some overspray from underside the bumper. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to remove that with 180. Blow it off. Now, what we want to do is we want to reinforce the back area with our mesh. This is the most important part because this is what holds the whole entire crack together. So we're going to use this mesh and we want about just about a half inch on either side. So I'll take my scissors and I'll go ahead and I'll cut um, about the size that I need to cover the length of the crack and then I'll trim where necessary. All right, so we are about a half inch all around and we are ready now to weld or melt in this mesh into the plastic. On your plastic welder, you have all these numbers, but we know that we are looking for PP, which is right over here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take our dial, we're gonna set it to right here where it says PP. 
And that's going to give us the right amount of heat so that we don't overdo the plastic and we have enough heat to actually melt it. And then we're going to keep this tip on here, this flat iron tip, because that's going to help us to kind of melt in the metal mesh into the bumper to give it its strength. Okay, so we have our welder all heated up and we have our mesh ready to go. Now, when we do this, we want to let the heat from the welder um, melt the plastic and the mesh together, okay? We don't want to force it. We want to be very gentle. Now, this is a time-consuming process, so take your time with it. The more time that you take, the better the weld and the better the repair will be in the end. We'll start at the front and we just want to hold it on there. And when we hold it on there, we are uh, melting the plastic and then the mesh is going down into it. Okay, that's all we want to do. A little at a time. And what we'll do is we'll move the whole course of the actual mesh itself. Okay, now that we have the mesh all welded into the plastic, we're gonna kind of smooth out our welds. Now this is a time consuming process. This whole weld here took about 15 minutes to do because you gotta move just a little bit at a time. So what I'm trying to do right now, take my high spots and kind of smear them all together. And remember the back is not gonna look amazing. It's not gonna look beautiful. It's just meant for your structure. We want to make sure that that crack does not reappear. It doesn't have the flex to reappear. Um, it's structurally sound in the back. Okay, now that we have smoothed out the finish, what we're going to be doing is we're going to reinforce it with our uh, FiberFlex UniWeld uh, rods. Now these can be used over a variety of different types of plastics and they're reinforced inside to give it extra strength. And we can use it on the back and we'll be using it on the front side as well. But before we can do that, we need to take this glossiness away. So we're gonna use that 180. We can also use 80 to smooth it out, but I don't wanna take off too much material. Ah! And now we're gonna go ahead and blow it off. Now when we come over to our um, unit that is going to be the regulator for heat and different types of plastic, we have right here, we've turned it to the fiber flex setting, okay? So that's going to enable us to melt this um, rod properly and into the plastic. The way that um, they are telling us to do this is we don't stick it here and melt like this. What we want to do is we want to kind of melt one side first, get it a little bit heated up about an inch at a time, then we want to put that down. You want to break it off, okay? And then you're going to melt that in. Now for this, there's no particular type of technique. You just want to make sure you get it all in. And you also want to make sure that it is pressed appropriately down into all those little grooves because this is going to build the strength. The more you have, the better the repair is going to be. And you're going to follow the same process over the whole entire repair. You're going to be reinforcing the whole entire area. Okay, so the back side is officially done. There's no need to go ahead and sand it. Um, it's just for strength. It's not the prettiest that you're ever gonna see on the back side, but it is strong, okay? And that is exactly what we want out of the repair, okay? Now, we're gonna go over and flip it to the front side. And what we're gonna do is first we wanna sand it because we wanna make sure that our whole area is uh, feather edge. But now we have the tear drop shaped um, Dremel attachment. And what I want to do is I want to kind of V groove. So I don't want the edges to be like this. I want them to kind of slope. 
okay kind of like this all right so that way that when the um, new plastic comes in it's kind of a better transition instead of being abrupt it's kind of sloped and that new plastic can come into here and be a tighter bond and kind of give it uh, these hard edges smooth them out and slope them in So now we're ready for our repair. We have our correct rod and we have our uh, welder set back at the appropriate setting. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna place our rod. There's a hole right here. And we're just gonna guide it and we're gonna fill this area with the correct plastic. And then we'll go from there. We wanna gently just move along the crack and just feed that plastic right into the rod and it's going to go in so nice and so smooth and it's going to create amazing bond throughout the plastic. Okay, take a look at how nice and smooth that weld is from top to bottom. So we've effectively filled in our groove uh, because now our edges are nice and sloped and we have a nice bead of the correct plastic that is meant for this particular bumper. Okay, now we're ready to sand it with the 180 because remember, we don't want too much shiny on the top for our next step, which is gonna be the Fiberflex on the top for added reinforcement. Okay, so now we have a kind of a low spot where the groove was, and that's perfectly fine because we're gonna use our Fiberflex rod. Now, before we use the other uh, circular tip, we can still use this tip and it will work just fine. So we're gonna use it in the same manner, but we're not gonna kind of take it out too far because we want it to stay as much as we can into the groove and save ourselves on sanding. We wanna to try to do this repair with as much plastic as possible and as little flexible filler as we need. So we're gonna go ahead and warm up that one side and then we'll place it on the actual crack and then we'll separate it by melting it off right here at the edge, okay? And then once we have it on the actual panel itself, then we can go ahead and we can work it into our crack and then we can kind of smooth it over on either side and we'll do this for the whole length of the actual repair itself. Okay, so we got that Fiberflex rod all melted in. And what I can do now with this rod is I can just kind of smooth it out. And when I smooth it out, what that's gonna do is that's gonna help with less sanding. This is essentially gonna be your filler that, you're gonna, <laughs> that you don't need to put into the bumper because we're filling it with a plastic-like um, material that's gonna have a flex and it's gonna be very, very um, reinforced and it's gonna strengthen the repair. Okay, so now you can see that we have our plastic Fiberflex rod here that's dried and we're going to use our 180 once again and we're going to smooth it out and we're going to basically treat it like a regular plastic repair if it had filler on or something like that. Okay, so we got that all sanded down with 180 and it's really smooth. Now you have two options here. You can fill in these little divots here with a little weld, but these really are credit card deep. So if you focus on here, you can see one, two, these little divots are very, very thin, probably credit card deep. And you could use the, the um, welding rod to fill them in, but it is a little bit time consuming. So instead, what I would prefer to do is use just a Polyflex, um, flexible polyester glazing putty and this is meant for bumpers and we're just going to use just a little bit of that to fill in those little divots smooth it out to give us a surface ready for primer and we're just going to go ahead and smear a little bit into here okay so we're going to go ahead with our 180 grit <laughs> And now we're going to use our 220 to refine that scratch and let's see how good our repair was because we're going to take a look at what's left with the filler that, felt, uh, that filled in those little divots. All right guys, so as you can see here, it left the filler only in the areas where it was low and you can tell that it's a very nice 
strong repair, okay? And uh, so what we're gonna go ahead with this, uh, just for the purpose of the video, remember this is just for uh, demonstration purposes. It's got messed up areas, cracks. It had some messed up area here. But we demonstrated today how to fix a crack. So for the purpose of the video, we're just gonna use some uh, flexible uh, primer surfacer and a rattle can to show you what it looks like. So stay tuned to the end. I'll spray some on there and show you what it looks like. So I'm glad you guys came along on this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, put it in the comments. Hey, and if you do it a different way, tell me in the comments too. I'd love to share that with everyone. So this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys in the next one.